Hello, hello, and welcome to another day on the channel. My name is RN Jesus, and today we'll be doing some Kaladesh Remastered now that it's up on MTG Arena again. I'm not too familiar with this set, so I'm not really sure what's the greatest. Our rare here is Rishkar's Expertise, which I'm going to assume is powerful. Like with Rhyperion Tiger, it's a 6 mana draw 4 and cast a spell, so it's not like a do nothing spell. So I feel like Rishkar's Expertise is pretty good, but then there's also Aerial Responder, which I know is really good. A 2-3 Flying Vigilance Lifelink is like Nighthawk Scavenger, except with, or Nighthawk uh, Ambusher, or whatever it's called, except without Lifelink, or, or without Death Touch, instead Vigilance, which is also bad and good, but we'll just take the Rishkar's Expertise. And here we have a Renegade Rallier, which is, I don't know how good that is. Could be decent. There's an Engineered Might. The thing this suffers from is that it's not instant speed, is what I'm looking at. It's a nice finisher, though. And then there's a, just a Druid of the Cowl. I like that. A nice Mana Elf to ramp for our Rishkars. More, Shipwreck Moray looks pretty decent. I know this one's pretty decent for 4 mana, 4 energy, if you're in the energy deck. Implement of Examination, 4 mana draw 2 on an artifact. Malfunction, decent removal spell. I know Night Market Lookout overperforms, as even if, if especially if you have a Sky Skiff or anything that can crew this. Reckless Fire Weaver's fine. Let's we'll take Druid of the Cowl. And now we get a Monstrous Onslaught. Deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control as you cast a spell. Okay, so it doesn't suffer from, like, any possible, like, oh no, I have, I gotcha with this type of X. You, I remove your creature, now you don't deal any damage, which is, and it divides the damage, so you can, like, wipe the board if you have a really big creature. Then again, there's also an Aether Swooper, which I know all the Aether creatures are really powerful. There's a Visionary Augmenter, pretty good. Um, it's either between the Monstrous Onslaught and the Visionary Augmenter, I think, here. Yeah, we'll just stay on color with Monstrous Onslaught. And now... Thriving Rhino is decent, especially in the energy decks. Hidden Stockpile. Um, Hidden Stockpile is really strong. But the one problem is that we're not really in those colors. There's an Aether Poisoner if we want to go into black green. I know Aether Poisoner is pretty good. Chandra's Revolution is a fine removal spell. Um, maybe just take the Thriving Rhino and cut off green over taking Aether Poisoner. Yeah, okay. And Oath of Ajani. And as Battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Okay, so it's just like a... Like a bossery solidarity. Except with an extra pip of green. But then again, there's also a Glint Sleeve Artisan. Which, 2-2 two -two Fabricate, pretty good. Um, red doesn't have much... Blue has Contraband Kingpin still in the pack, which is surprising. Uh, yeah, let's take the Glint Sleeve Artisan. There's nothing really else in the pack for us. Here. Here. Built to Smash. Alley Evasion. Um, I'm not really sure what to pick here. Like, Dead Card fine implement of malice is fine i guess like the implements are all fine but all of them are not very great let's take like oh i don't even have that i don't even have all the blue only marshes 
We'll just take that, and now we can get a Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot if we want to go into Energy. Because I know this is really good for the Energy decks. Like, two mana, three Energy, and then you can get three more Energy and three and six life from it for one card. Tezzer's Ambition, really good. Card draw. There's also a Ballista Charger, which could be good, but... Let's just take the Woodweaver Puzzle Knot. And here we can take a Renegade Rallier. Or a Nimble Innovator. Nimble Innovator is like fine. Blue, green's an energy deck. But I think I like Renegade Rallier. Like Sacrifice a Puzzle Knot, Return Puzzle Knot. And now we can get an Eddy Trail Hawk. Subtle Strike still in the pack is surprising. This is our wheel pack, by the way. Uh, Subtle Strike I know is an amazing combat trick. Kill something, have your creature survive the fight. Built to last is fine. But we'll just take the Eddy Trail Hawk. Yeah. Maybe, I'm not really sure where we're supposed to be, but now I think we know, considering that both of the green-white cards wield, so nobody else is in the colors. So do you want to take the Engineered Might or the Renegade Rallier? Let's take the more unique effect in Engineered Might, where we can just pump our entire board. So let's, we're trying to get more Fabricate cards... Um, here, there's an Unbridled Growth, which is just a cantrip. Alley Evasion gets Revolt Trigger. <coughs> Inspired Charge is also good, but we also have Engineered Might, so we don't really care. Let's just take the Aether Inspector. And now there's an Oval Dragster. Over Conviction. Well, I think I like Conviction better. And uh, Narman Cobra is fine. It's not amazing, but fine. And just a fog. Here in pack two, our rare is Marionette Master. Now that is a powerful one. Somebody's going to be happy with that because we are not taking that. We are taking Untethered Express. If you're not familiar with this, it is a 4-4 Trample for four mana. Via, it's an artifact vehicle that says whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it and crew one. So this just keeps growing and growing and growing. And if you have like a combat trick or two to help this get through, this just becomes super insane really fast. There's also Eddy Trail, Hawk, Rhyperion, Tiger. We'd hoped for High Spire Infusion to wheel to go with our Untethered Express. Marionette Master is really broken, but with double black, it's hard to cast. Anyone who's played against any form of artifact combo deck in Commander knows how powerful this is. It's a 1-3 with Fabricate that says whenever an artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power, or each opponent loses life equal to its power. Here, Long Tusk Cub. Really powerful and common, one of the best, I assume. Being a 2-2 when it deals combat damage to a player, create 2 energy, and you can pay 2 energy to put two count or to put a counter on it. Of course, there's also a Quicksmith Rebel, which I know is a really good card, turning an artifact into a shock every turn. Super powerful. Dawn Feather Eagle would also be good. Riparian Tiger, but we'll just take the broken 2-drop in Long Test Cub. Plus, we can get it back with Renegade Rallier, so if it, like, trades off, we can just bring it back and start getting the counters back. Here, there's a Creeping Mold, if you want to be evil. There's an Appetite for the Unnatural, which is main deckable for the fact that there are a lot of artifacts and enchantments. Since this is, like, an artifact base set, we could just take some my rare, or my 20 gems... Or we can take the Editrail Hawk. I like the Editrail Hawk for the fact that we can get Long Tusk Cub in. We can get Untethered Express in. We can get Thriving Rhino in. Yeah, I like that. Somebody's going to have a great black-white deck. 
Here we just take the Countless Gears Renegade over Appetite, actually. How much removal do we have? I don't think we have any removal yet. We have Monstrous Onslaught, but that's it. So let's take the Appetite for the Unnatural. Yeah, I like that. And here... There's an Empiral Voyager. There's a Narman Renegade that enters the battlefield with a plus and plus encounter for permanent left. Or a Riperian Tiger. I think I'm going to need to take the Riperian Tiger here. It feels a little bad since I don't... I kind of I really want to take the Narman Renegade. Or the Wild Wanderer. But I think it's just super important here to get that 5 drop creature. We need that high power for like monstrous onslaught purposes. And oh no. Why is this still in the pack? Glimmer of genius. Scry two, draw two, create two energy. Super powerful. This is pick six and it's still in the pack. But we just have to go for hunt the weak as a good removal spell. I can tell black and white are getting black is getting cut off at least. Not sure if white is, though. Yeah, maybe white is. Maybe we should have went into, like, a green-blue energy deck. Here we get a Sage of Sahali's Claim. Great amount of energy for its cost. We could try and go into blue and take, like, Tezzer's Ambition or Malfunction. Now let's just take the Sage of Sahali's Claim. And now we can get a Blossoming Defense. Or a High Spire Artisan. I think I like the High Spire Artisan here. Over the combat trick. Like in the way of combat tricks. What do we have? We don't have any combat tricks yet actually. Let's actually take the Blossoming Defense as a combat trick. Number one. Now we can take a Riperian Tiger over a High Spire Infusion. I like that. Another Riperian Tiger. I don't think I want the fourth or the third one but you never know um creeping mold we aren't gonna play that so let's just take like an implement nimble innovator wild wander okay at least we got something wild wander or like and if we get like maybe one more we could like splash something that's really bomb Bomb heavy, or bomb, like, super powerful is what I want to say. Here in pack three, we get a Cultivator's Caravan. I'm not really sure how to feel about this one. Like, I could just take a Servant of the Conduit as, like, a super good mana dork. Or we can take this three mana, crew three, add one mana of any color. Five, five. Hmm. I think let's take the Cultivator's Caravan. Maybe we can add in the Riperian Tiger. Be like a rampy deck. I'm sorry, Servant of the Conduit. Uh, hopefully this wheels. That's not going to wheel. Who am I kidding? Um, another hidden... This is Hidden Stockpile number three. Would have had a amazing Hidden Stockpile deck. If we were in those colors. But green seems to be flowing really well. As we saw three... All three Riperian Tigers go really late in that pack, too. How much removal are we looking at? We got Appetite for the Unnatural, Hunt the Weak, Monstrous Onslaught. Okay, so we could do with another removal spell or two. Here we have Aerodrop Aeronauts. Really good if you can get the Revolt off. There's Servo Exhibition, which is pretty good, but I think our two drop slot is pretty covered. I think we'd rather take the 4 3 flyer. Plus, works well with Rishkar's expertise. Yeah, our deck is looking pretty sweet at the moment. Um, I don't think we want to play Conviction, but we'll see, depending on how these end up. Okay. There's an Arborback Stomper. And there's about, it's a 4-5, gain 5 life. It's just this, except one more power doesn't have flying. One more power, one more toughness, and then flying has trample. And it doesn't require a revolt. There's also Lifecraft Cavalry, but this card is just reads super powerful. 
Four, five, trample, gain five life. Just can save you from a lethal attack. And plus it's five power for our rich card's expertise. And do we take another one or we take a hunt the weak? Hmm, that's a good question. Our five drop slot is looking pretty full, but we can cut like a Riparian Tiger for it. But also Hunt the Week is super good. Yeah, I think the correct pick here is Hunt the Week over a a um Arbor Back Stomper number two. Um here nothing everything's pretty filler here. I guess I mean we already have two Eddie Trail Hawks, that's why I'm not really considering it. I guess if we get one more self assembler we might play it. No, we already have enough five drops. Eddie Trail Hawk number three or Countless Gears Renegade. Eh, I guess Countless Gears could do something. And here we can get a Cog Works Workers Puzzle Knot. Five drop slot is pretty full, as I said, for Life Crafter. And Dawn Feather, same thing. We'll just take a Puzzle Knot. So yeah, the deck's looking pretty good. We've got a lot of powerful cards at the five. Pretty sure we might have to cut one of them at least. Here, Mobile Garrison, Herald of the Fair, Aviary Mechanic. Huh. Aviary Mechanic can return Puzzle Knot to get an extra 1-1 one, one and get Revolt, but I think Herald of the Fair is better here. And now we get to pick a Monstrous Onslaught as a removal spell. I don't hate it, especially with all of our big creatures. Just like wipe away a few things and maybe kill a servo or two that's lying around. Uh, Unbridled Growth, it triggers Revolt, that's about it. Aether Inspector, probably one of the worst inspectors. Or the worst Aether cards, I meant to say. Okay, so looking at our curve, we've got like a monstrous onslaught. You can move over there. Audacious Infiltrator is fine, but we don't really care for it. Um, Conviction, Blossoming Defense, Unnatural, Hunt the Weak. Yeah, these last few picks won't really matter too much. Fragmentize. Decent sideboard card against like an artifact deck. Every what am I getting? Every deck has a good artifact to kill with that actually. So yeah, deck turned out pretty well. But now it's time for the hard part, making cuts. Okay, so looking at our curve like this, I'm putting like all the spells that aren't actually like their mana costs. Because they're either removal spells, pump spells, whatever. Where you can just cast them at any time instead of casting them on curve. And that's what we're looking at. Blossoming Defense, Appetite for the Unnatural, 2 Hunt the Weeks, 2 Monsters Onslaughts, Engineered Might. And I guess Rishkar's Expertise as well. Yeah, since you need to get a creature out first. And if it gets removed, then you're just going to have to wait. Countless Gears Renegade is a filler. Same with Conviction. Herald of the Fair, same thing. Pretty filler. Sage of Sahali's Claim. How much energy do we care about? Riparian Tigers. Um, Edit Trail Hawks. Um, Long Tusk Cubs. Yeah, I think it's worth keeping. Then again, we do have the Puzzle Knot. Which creates 6 energy by itself. Maybe cut the Aether Inspector. Oh yeah, there's also this that cares about energy as well. I mean, with my combat tricks and ways like keep pushing it through with like Hunt the Weeks to get counters on it, I don't hate it. I think I cut the Narman Cobra. Like a 2-1, give it Death Touch. It's fine, but not amazing. It's just going to get blocked by the one of the many servos in this set. Um, Y 
Wild Wanderer, I don't think is that great in this deck. Like, we want to run 17 lands. But I don't think we want to ramp with Wild Wanderer. Especially since we're not splashing anything. Um, Thriving Rhino, another thing that cares about energy. I just missed all the energy cards. But yeah, glad we're keeping the Sage. Maybe cut Appetite for the Unnatural, since now we have two Monstrous Onslaughts, two Hunt for the Weeks. So we don't really need it. And it's pretty limited. Destroying only artifacts and enchantments. Yeah, let's cut that. And I like keeping the combat trick of Blossoming Defense. Yeah. I don't... Let's see. What could be our final cut? Engineered Might? It's like a finisher type effect. But that's about it. I mean, it gets an untethered express through really easily. I feel like I want to cut a two drop, but which one? Eddie Trail Hawk gets the untethered express through, the Thriving Rhino through, the Aether Inspector through, Riperian Tiger through, even though it can get through itself quite easily. Yeah, I guess only one Eddie Trail Hawk is necessary. Yeah. So let me do some finish organizing, and we'll be back with a prayer. Okay, so before we get started, let's get into the deck overview. We are running one Blossoming Defense as our only combat trick, and it's in speed. We have Cogwork Puzzle Knot that creates a servo, sacrifices itself for a servo, and triggers some revolt. Eddie Trailhawk as a great way to get in and get your thing through. We Woodweaver Puzzle Knot gains life, creates energy, super good. Uh, Druid of the Cowl, just a cheap mana dork, really good. We have a Long Tusk Cub, one of those powerful uncommons, especially two drops in the set that just gets bigger and bigger the longer it's on board. Sage of Sahali's Claim, it's a 2 1 for that gets energy, energy, energy. That's it. Three energy. Uh, there's a Glint Sleeve Artisan, which is a 2 2 with Fabricate 1, always good. Thriving Rhino, a 2 3 that. Cr creates two energy and whenever it attacks i can pay some energy to get a counter on it pretty good just keeps getting bigger renegade rally or return something from the graveyard once something dies so like we can swing with our long tusk club it tr trades then we can bring it back with renegade rally or, or sacrifice the puzzle knot here's a cultivator's caravan i'm not sure how to feel about this it could be good it could be bad but with our five drops i think it's really good so we can like turn four cast riparian tiger Crew with Caravan swing in. Or not crew. You, you know what I mean. Just cast Riparian Tiger. Or we can like crew it and then tap it for mana and cast like Monstrous Onslaught to kill stuff. Or Rishkar's Expertise. There's an Aether Inspector, which is fine in this deck. It's a 2 3 and it's energy and creates some servos. There's a Hunt the Weak, which puts a counter on something and then fights. Untethered Express, super powerful. Just. T untethered bomb that just keeps smacking in airdrop aeronaut pretty good gain five life our back stomper also really good gain five life monstrous onslaught great removal spell slash board wipe riparian tiger big chunky creature hard to kill in combat engineered might great way to pump the team or pump one creature for lethal and rishkar's expertise card draw i'm again not sure how to feel about the rares but i feel like it's going to be really good it reads pretty good, especially with this deck. And now, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may you bless this deck, and may our draws be perfect. May we never be flooded or mana screwed. May we always draw the perfect card at the right time, and may we never have problems with this deck, with curve or anything. In your precious and wonderful name, amen. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. On the play, this hand doesn't really have anything except for the Untethered Express, but I think it's keepable. Like, if we draw any creature, it looks really good. <laughs> like the name, Many Bears Deep. Many Bears. Um, just land. That's fine. Now we can cast Untethered Express. 
We're looking for like a glint sleeve artisan or something. That'd be great. They play a sky skiff. Cultivator's caravan, also fine. Crew the Untitled Express to crew the Cultivator's Caravan. Just go up the chain. <laughs> they play a Hinterland Drake. Can't block artifact creatures, so it can't block a caravan. They crew with the Drake. Still no creatures for these vehicles. I, I, I swear I'm running creatures. I'm running like a bunch of them. Now, let's just hope and pray for a creature, any creature. We got five drops. They play a Countless Gears Renegade. They can crew that. They play an Aether Theorist. They crew with a Theorist and swing for four. Sure. If we draw a creature, when the clear. Glint Sleeve Artisan. That's really good here. I'll choose the mode, create a 1-1 one, one servo. Create a servo. Crew with Untethered Express. And start smacking in for 5. And just start winning with that. Sadly, Cultivator's Caravan can't be crewed by Justice Glint Sleeve. But we have a bunch of life gain. We've got Arbac Stomper and stuff like that. Untethered Express, looking pretty good. If we draw a land, we can crew Untethered Express, swing with it, then cap, um, protect it with Blossoming Defense, and then cast Rishkar's Expertise to draw a billion cards. They swing with everything. Uh, let's block with Glint Sleeve and just trade. Now, just don't kill our servo, please. I mean, we have Blossoming Defense to protect it if they do have, like, a removal spell or bounce spell for it, like, leave in the dust. Spire Patrol. Uh, I think we have to protect it just so we can keep swing or crewing our untethered express. Yeah, we just gotta protect it. Spire Patrol is really good though. Crew untethered express. Moved combat. Swing for six. Just keeps growing. Cast Rishkar's expertise. Monstrous Onslaught, wipe their board, sorta. Kill the Spire Patrol and Hinterland Drake, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, three damage, three damage. And they concede them to a Monstrous Onslaught, GG's. Yeah, once we finally found that creature, we just crushed them with Rishkar's Expertise. Draw six cards, including an Arborback Stomper, Aether Inspector, Eddie Trailhawk. Yeah, that was just going to be a game. On to the next one. Uh, feels good. Here on the draw against Alphanet, this hand is four and five drops galore. We can't even cast any of our spells. We're just going to have to mulligan here. This is better. We'll keep in bottom a Rhyperion Tiger. We have enough five drops already. We don't need a Rhyperion. Planes and pass. Then we'll cast a turn to Eddie Trailhawk. Now I kind of feel bad for not bottoming a land there. Like three lands would have been fine. Druid of the Cowl. Move to combat. Swing. Then cast Druid. Like, if they had impeccable timing, we might want a Blossoming Defense. Oh. What do you do? Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, create energy, attacks, you may pay two, put plus one counter on tap one target defending creature. That's pretty good. Too bad it's going to die. Um. Well, let's move to combat and swing with the Hawk. 
They take it, so we can Blossom and defense it. Maybe we should have done this combat for an extra guaranteed damage. But yeah, let's do that. And hunt the weak. Yeah, I think we misordered it, so we should have done it pre-combat. But if they blocked, then we wouldn't have to use Hunt the Week, so there was a chance, but I doubt they would have blocked anyway. Aeronaut Admiral. Swing. Decline. If they want to trade with their 4 mana for my 2 mana, that's fine by me. And I'm sure they're going to have a big creature here, so let's just play Glint Sleeve and... Uh, let's put a counter on it for Rishkar's expertise purposes. Now, if we do draw Rishkar's expertise, it's a draw three and cast something. They cast a Fairgrounds Warden. Amazing removal. Uh, Renegade Rallier would be good if we could bring back something. So let's just hold that and pass. They play another forest into a propeller pioneer. Pretty decent. 2 1 flyer fabricate. Monstrous onslaught. We can kill the propeller pioneer. Um, let's move to combat and swing for one. If they just bounce, I don't think they might want to risk that. Yeah, they just take one. Cast a renegade rallier. Pass a turn. Like, it feels bad. Ooh, Dawn Feather Eagle, that's scary. We're gonna have to take it here. Here, we can play a forest and cast Onslaught. Kill Dawn Feather Eagle. Or kill the Propeller Pioneer in a servo. Let's kill the Eagle. And I think we'll be willing to trade Renegade Rallier for the Pioneer. They take it. Just uh, another Eagle. Great. At least we can block this round this time. Cog Workers Puzzle Knot. So let's swing for three. They take it. Cast the Puzzle Knot. And we can crack it at instant speed, so we'll pass. Another eagle. What is that, number three? Yeah, number three eagle. Yikes. So we have to block everything here. Let's crack the puzzle knot. Double block here. Block here. Go down to one. Okay, let's see what we can top deck. And a cultivator's caravan won't do it. GG's. The Triple Dawn Feather Eagle for the win. Yeah, pretty good. On to the next game. I think we could have done that better where we've, like, ordered things differently or, like, played better in general. But, yeah. Can't win them all. And I think I just maybe shouldn't have been so aggressive with killing that Aether Rock, maybe. Maybe we could have just, like, played a creature, then kill it next turn. Oh, no. On to the next game. On the play, this hand looks fine. We have a turn three Rhino into a Hunt the Weak, so we can keep swinging with it. But no more energy for it. We're still annoying. Also, where are our two drops? Like, we're running a bunch of them. I'm surprised we haven't seen many of them. Guess luck of the draw. Just play a two, three. Hopefully no daring demolitions in our future. Aerial Responder. We are killing that. Too much of a liability. Swing. Pay the two energy. And now we have a 4-5 on turn 4. We'll have Blossoming Defense up soon to protect it. They cast a Foundry Screecher. That's pretty sad. Uh, forest is perfect. for Now we can cast Arbor Back Stomper. Do you want to block? No? Cool. We'll cast an Arbor Back Stomper. Just play some big creatures. How you feel about that? Let's 
SRAM's expertise into Embrawl Bruiser. I mean, that's really bad for us, but it's kind of fine. Bruce Cross expertise is sorcery speed. Let's just cast it. Bruce Cross expertise. Monstrous Onslaught. Perfect. Just wipe their board. They all concede after this right now. They're not conceding. That's interesting. I mean, we just paid six mana to draw five cards and wipe their board. They can revoke privileges, sure. Uh, we just cast a Rhyperion Tiger, get a bit of energy. Swing, pay the energy, just in case they have removal. We want to hold up Blossoming Defense. And they lose. GG's. On to the next game. Yeah, just a five mana wipe their board. That's what I'm talking about when I see Monstrous Onslaught. It's not just a mere two mana bite. It's a board wipe. On the draw, this hand is really slow. Like, seriously, where are all of our two draws? We only see our four and five. I'm going to have to check the deck after this and see if we're actually running any. Because, by God, we have not seen any at all. Rishkar's Expertise... They're a red deck into a Metallic Mimic. That's interesting. Artificer. Artificer Tribal over there? I'd be interested. Like, if they chose Servo, I wouldn't be surprised. A S Sweatworks Brawler. That's scary. Come on, draw some lands. They swing for four. Is this mono red? No, they're probably missing colors. Pay some mana. Cast a puzzle knot. Pass the turn. <coughs> oh, I need some water. Okay, so blue, red artificers. What can you expect? We take another four from their Sweatworks Brawler. And they pass. Interesting. Well, we'll play a land. Let's move to combat and swing with the Rhino. We can't pay. They just take it. And let's land this Untethered Express. Start smacking with it. And next turn we can crew Untethered Express, swing with it, and then wipe away their board. I like that. That is if we draw land. Aether Inspector would be fine as well, just to get some energy and get this Thriving Rhino growing. Destructive Tampering. Rude. Just because we were going to kill your stuff doesn't mean you have to kill our stuff. Uh, Arborback Stomper would be good after we draw land. Another Monstrous Onslaught. Not the greatest here. We'll just play an Aether Inspector. Create an ener two energy. Smack with a Thriving Rhino. Just, and we'll hold back the servo just in case we have removal. Because we don't want to die this, like, Metallic Mimic or some random effect. Or, like, the giant that has Improvise and Haste. So, oh, are they Grixis? They swing with the Sweatworks. We have to take it. We can't really properly block it, and we can't jump block it, because Minache. Okay, land. Come on. Give me a land. Give me a land. Let's go. That's a good start. Monstrous Onslaught. Kill that. Just get it out of the way. Be gone. Kill it. Kill it. Burn it at the stake. They let it die. And since we're at four, let's play it safe and swing with only the other inspector. Or do we swing with the rhino? Let's just swing with the inspector only. They take two. They pass. 
And if things go as planned, they just dump out their hand of creatures, and then we can monstrous onslaught wipe their board and nearly kill them. Fortuitous find. Hmm. Sweatwork Sprawler again. Well, let's Rishkar's expertise for four cards. Cast. Hunt the weak? Yeah, hunt the weak. Have you fight you. And swing with these two. Now that we don't really have to fear anything, but we don't want to swing with Rhino or else, you know, he dies. So yeah, somehow after being beaten down to six by 16 damage by this one Sweatworks Brawler, we might actually survive this. Not sure what they were doing. Mobile Garrison. That is kind of awkward with our Onslaught. Drew it of the Cowl. Um... Cast Rhyperion Tiger. Get some energy. Move to combat. Swing with everything? Oh, they have Essence Extraction. Good removal spell. I would have waited till after. Swing with the Rhino. Trigger. And we'll pay some energy. Actually, we don't need to pay any, any more energy into the Thriving Rhino. And Pyro Helix won't even do it, so... We'll just let this happen. Don't even pump it anymore, because Rapirian Tiger represents more damage with it. And then just cast Druid. Sure, it would be better for Monstrous Onslaught, but I think it's fine right now. They crew the garrison... Shop block with a rhino? Yeah, sure. Cast a druid of the cowl. Pass the turn. So yeah, monstrous onslaught number two should do it for them. They quicksmith genius, but we can still wipe away their board. Monstrous onslaught. Deal three damage and two damage there. And they concede. Good game. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check. Are we running, like, any two drops? Like, all we've seen is Cogwork and Druid throughout the entire of our games. Entirety of our games. I swear, we're running two drops. Yeah, we have Cogwork, Eddy Trail, Woodwork. Yeah, we have six two drops. Three three drops. Maybe we should be running one more two drop instead of all of these five drops. Yeah, let's cut a onslaught for like an Editrail Hawk or a Rhyperion Tiger. Let's cut the Tiger for an Editrail Hawk. Yeah, let's run it like that. That way we can actually cast our spells on curve. Because not having two drops is really bad and really slow. On to the next game. K okay, on the play here. This hand looks pretty good. We'll keep. Um, yeah, we can lead off with a Puzzle Knot, turn 3, cast Caravan, turn 4, crack Puzzle Knot, cast Renegade Rallyer to bring it back. I like that a lot. Let me... Airdrop Arrow Knots are fine here. Gonna be harder to trigger Revolt. Blossoming Defense, pretty good. Swing for 1, cast a Caravan... Pass the turn, holds up defense, even though I don't think we'll want to save our servo very much. So, yeah, we can, like, just... We won't be able to crew and attack with Caravan, but we can, like, crack the sir, uh, Puzzle Knot, play a land, cast Renegade Rallyer again, return the Puzzle Knot. Wait, return target permanent, okay. For a second, I thought this hit Creature. We're good. Oh, please don't say our opponent timed out. It's always annoying when this happens. Hopefully they're just like considering their plays. Especially if you're at Mythic 288. I expect better from you. 
You should know how to play your own deck. Despicable Che is my bay. Unforgivable. They pass due to timeout and discard. Maverick Thopterus. Yeah, I don't think that's what they wanted to discard. Crack the puzzle knot. Cast Rallier. Return puzzle knot. Swing for one. Pass a turn. Okay, they're back. They we got a free time walk, and they discarded a Maverick Thopterus, so I'm not sure how to feel about this game anymore. Play a land. Crew the caravan. Swing. They block a servo. Fine by me, because now we can cast airdrop aeronauts with a revolt. Gain five life. Pass a turn. And now we can hold up blossoming defense from here on out. And if we get Rishkar's expertise, whew, that's gonna be fun. They cast a second Maverick Thopterist. Yikes. Hunt the weak. Don't mind if I do. That's my favorite thing to do on the weekend. Have you fight the Thopterist? Yeah. That way our servos can swing in. And they concede to fight. GG's. On to the next game. <sighs> Climb the leaderboards. Yeah, although them timing out there just really put them into the dirt. Yeah. On to the next game. On the draw with the Druid of the Cowl, his hand looks pretty good. Ramp into a tethered, untethered express and start swimming with that. They cast in a tune with Aether to help fix their lands. Looks like they don't need that, need many fixing though, or much fixing at all. They get two energy though, which is scary. They get a theorist, yeah. Energy count is going off the charts for them. Turn two have five energy. That's really. Let's, let's just hope that they don't have anything to spend their energy on. Besides a theorist, of course. Untethered Express. Untethered Express, pay for the best. Or, pray for the best. Swing with a 5 5 next turn. Possibly engineered might in the next following turn. So, yeah, like we Arborback Stomper, crew with the Untethered Express, swing for 5. And Arbor Backstomper is a perfect card to lead off of. Okay, so blue, red, green energy. Hey, isn't this just like Kaladesh standard? They just pass. Which is fair, considering that until they express, they'll like trade their entire board for. Um, let's cast Rapirian Tiger or Arbor Backstomper. Let's go with Rhyperion. And if we swing, we'll trade off with the Theorist and the Sage. Which I think is fine. Yeah, let's do that. Trade my ex Express for the Theorist and the Sage. Yeah. It's not like what we'd hope for, but it's fine. Stack it to Sages first, just in case they have a combat trick. We at least kill something. But now we can just keep playing 5 drops and keep smacking them in the face. And they'll just keep having to trade 2 for 2s. Or 2 for 1s. Chandra's Revolution. I mean, on the plus side, at least we didn't cast Arbor Back Stomper there. Well, let's cast an Aether Inspector while we have the mana for it. Start creating some servos. Don't mind if I do. Maybe win with some engineered might. Uh, let's move to combat. Swing for two. Pay some energy for a servo.
And cast an Arbor Back Stomper. Gain 5 life. If they had Shrewd Negotiation, that would be annoying. Trade their Seed Sculptor. Uh, but they have a Gear Seeker Serpent. Yikes. Huh. On the plus side, that's pretty good. So, like, we can have these fight and trade, but I don't think I really want that very much. Yeah, let's lead off with... Let's cast Eddie Trailhawk into the Riving Rhino. Get a bunch of energy. Hey, we're matching up energy with the energy deck. Sweet. And then we can start growing this Rhino. They hunt the weak there them on their own terms, which is definitely scary. And Empiral Voyager... Let's see, we can hunt the weak. Have you eat you. And start swinging for four power. We will pay an energy to make it fly. But do we want to pay two energy to give it a counter? Yeah, I think we do. Since it's only a single energy for Eddie Trailhawk, I think it's fine. Plus, especially if we find a... Wood Weaker, Wood Weaver's Puzzle Knot, we will be in, we will be golden. Gear Seeker Serpent, they can give unblockable, but they have to kind of hold it back. Eddie Trail Hawk, don't mind if I do. Maybe it's lethal if we just engineered Might for two, two, but I don't want to do math right now, it's too much. Just something with these. We will pay all of the energy here. Smack him for six. And next turn, we should have lethal on board. Or maybe not on board, but yeah. We can crack the puzzle knot, give everything plus two, plus two. And they concede. Good games. Yeah. Maybe we should have, like, been swinging with the Aether Inspector there instead of the Thriving Rattle. But I think getting that damage in route versus Servos, I think, is better. On to the next game. And look at this. First time playing this set, and I'm already getting my gems back. Pretty sweet. On the play, this hand's fine. Glint Sleeve Artisan, turn 3. Turn 4, Untethered Express. Turn 5, Arborback Stomper, and start smacking their face around. Bap, bap, bap. Lead off with the forest. Let's see. What you got, OP? Mountain. Okay, well, we drew our land for Untethered Express. One more, and we can get Arbor Back Stomper and Aeronauts. They play an Air There Swooper. That is annoying, to say the least. We'll play a Glint Sleeve Artisan and create a Servo. That way, we can crew it just with the Servo rather than anything else. And the 2 2 can hold back their Servos pretty well and get past their Servos. Cast another Aether Swooper. Yikes. Into a Inventor's Apprentice. Well, guess what? We have an Untethered Express. How do you feel about that? Inventor's Apprentice is pretty good as a 1-mana 2-3. Especially in an aggro deck. But we'll be able to even out the life loss with the life gain from our back Stomper and Aeronaut. I think we'd rather just double block here with our Glint Sleeve Artisan versus risking our Untethered Express. Because if they do have a combat trick here, then I think it's best if they f we force them to use it like that. And now Untethered Express is looking super good. This might be a Chandra's Revolution, but then we can get an Aeronaut running. Unless it taps a land, which I'm not really sure. Welding sparks, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cast an airdrop aeronauts, gain five life. Ah, <sighs> fair magic. Yep, now we can block their Aether Supers, we can swing past their Aether Supers, we can start fighting their Aether Supers. Inventor's goggles into Padim. Console of Innovation. Well, they're gonna have an art. Wait, 
That's mean if your upkeep, if you control an artifact, the highest mana value. Ha, we have a puzzle knot. Your thing is useless. Let's just cast a puzzle knot. Swing for four. And I think we'll hunt the week, have a servo fight an Aether Swooper. Just so now we can block all the servos on the ground. We don't block Padim, sure, but I think it holds the ground pretty well. Maybe fighting with the arrow drop would have been better, but... Spreading out my threats like this, and not really spreading out... Actually, it's not really, but it's just being able to block efficiently and effectively. They swing with Padim, and the super, sure thing. They don't have any more energy. And they cast a Salivating Gremlins. Hey, Monstrous Onslaught. Dang you, Hexproof! Darn you! I just want to wipe away all your servos. Is that too much to ask? Apparently so. Let's move to combat. Swing for four. Cast an Arbor Back Stomper. Gain another five life. <laughs> Sorry, OP. It's just too good. It's a 5-4 four, four. that gains 5 life. What more could you want in magic? Fire Forger's Puzzle Knot. Paying off a servo. Now that... Padim's now being a problem. Because now they have something that's tied for the most. Well... Move to combat. Swing with airdrop aeronauts. And do we want to swing with Stomper? Stomper, if they block with salivating gremlins and uh, two one ones or crack the puzzle knot, that's fine. Yeah, I like that. I'll swing with the Stomper. And if they just bounce off of that, even better. Okay. Like that. That is fine. <laughs> Maybe we could have done it differently, but I'm not really sure. Monsters Onslaught, kill Padim. Four damage. Metallic Rebuke. Yikes. Well, we'll play a land and pass a turn and crack this puzzle knot. Now they're drawing two cards a turn, and that's really bad for us. Either Chaser, create some energy. And do they want to move the goggles? No, I mean, we're still beating them up for four in the air every turn. So, hopefully this game doesn't last longer than it has to. Brishkar's expertise would be a good draw. They equip it to the swooper. That means they can trade with the puzzle knot and the super. So, oh, they swing. Sure. We'll create a 1-1 one -one servo. Sure. I'm fine with this. Rhyperion Tiger, don't mind if I do. Get a big board. Get a big body. Pass. They draw an extra card. Hopefully they don't fire for they block with either super, fire forgers, puzzle knot, the arrow knot. Salivating Gremlins, cast another spell. Come on. I know you want to. They don't. You sicken me. Move to combat. Swing with Rhyperion Tiger. Pay some energy for it. And they have to soak up at least three of the damage here. So Salivating Gremlins will do it. Block with the other Chaser. And two one ones. A1, two one ones, yep. Sure, and we will sack it like that. We still kill everything. We just don't trample over for anything. Chomp, 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 and trade. And we'll cast an either inspector. <sighs> the combination of what they have is just super annoying. Inventor's Goggles, Aether Swooper, and Puzzle Knot. Just makes it so hard to swing with this arrow knot. If we get a Hunt the Week... Oh, they're... They're swinging? 
This must mean they have another flyer in hand. So we're looking for Hunt the Week number two. They play another Fire Forger's Puzzle Knot. Take out our next servo. Yikes. Into another Aether Swooper. They can't crack the Puzzle Knot now, which is pretty good. Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. There you are. We were wondering where you are all these days. Let's cast a Puzzle Knot. And we'll hold it. And not crack it just yet in case we draw our revolt creature. But Padim is saving them. Getting them two draws a turn is super annoying. Because we weren't really built for big artifacts. Like, we already traded with our Untethered Express. So a Cultivator's Caravan will stop their card draw. They swing. Create another Servo. No blocks. Cast an Aether Chaser. Come on. Forget about the goggles. Forget about the goggles. Just don't move the goggles. How much does it cost to just equip it too? Yeah, they still have mana up for Puzzle Knot. Come on, something good. Long Tusk Cub. Well, well, well. Don't mind if I do. That can get very big very fast, and we'll just crack the Puzzle Knot now. Gain a bit of energy and activate this so they can't respond with some Puzzle Knot shenanigans or whatever. They draw another card. Draw a card. Okay, so this can get become a 5-5, five, five, it looks like. Or, sorry, 6-6, six, six, so that can be pretty big on board. They swing with a swooper, create another servo, because that's how magic works. Yeah, they've played either swoop, three Aether Swoopers, two Aether Chasers. Yeah. And Maverick Thopterist. Yikes. That's a big board. And Flyers, too. We still have some good draws out of this. Rishgar's Expertise off the top into, like, Hunt the Week. Love to see it. Eddie Trailhawk. Okay. We can give our Long Tusk Cub flying. Force them to chump block. Also, two more energy. So this can become a 7-7. Seven, seven. They can block with, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, just straight off like that. And we're left with... They're left with the Aether Super, Aether Super, Padim, and two Thopters. What else can they do? They can, like, block, 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 crack a Puzzle Knot, kill it. Left with a Servo. I think we'd rather just have the Eddie Trailhawk ready for next turn. And if they just use... Um, Fire Forger's Puzzle Knots to kill the Eddie Trail Hawk. I'm fine with that, because that means our Arrow Knot is sort of safe. I say sort of in a very respectable manner. <laughs> uh, we're just really hoping for Rishkar's expertise. Yep. They blow up the Eddie Trail Hawk. Sure, they're still at four, so they're pretty... They're dead to a lot of stuff, but they keep drawing cards out of this, and that's what's killing me. They just pass. Blue, blooming, or Blossoming Defense. That's pretty good. Well, let's move to combat. Swing with the Long Dust Club. How do you plead? We can just pump it up twice. Have it survive combat. Pump it up three times. Four times. We can't pump it up five times. Rude. All we want to do is just let this thing survive. Now you gotta force me to do this. So they got two, four, seven damage. So yeah, blossoming defense should do it. Let me count. Two, four, recount. Yep. Blossoming defense. 
trade or eat their board. Long Tusk Cub lives, and we pass. The power of a two drop. And now their board looks considerably smaller. How many Aether Supers did you pick up? Like, seriously, one, two, three, four, five so far? Dang, I mean, their deck looks sweet. Our turn, we draw a land. We can pump this up one more time, but they'll just, like, trade off with some Aether Supers. Yeah, we'll just pass. And we'll play lands for Rishkar's expertise purposes. Yeah, but they only have actually a few more turns to live with Padim in play. A, they're theorists, so I hope that they have something. We already use our monstrous onslaught, so we can't really wipe their board very easily anymore. Another Eddie Trail Hawk. Okay, okay. I see you. That pumps up this long test cub to eight. So, like, let's see, they block two, eight, so two, five, six, seven, eight. Block, block, block. So, eat, take, eat that, eat that. We'll just eat some supers. Yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about this at the moment. They can start scrying. Or scry once at least before they pay all their mana into some supers. It's for some servos. Uh, I wasn't paying attention if they kept it on top or bottom. I was explaining, so. Hopefully they didn't keep anything good. If it's a Chandra's Pyro Helix on the Hawk, I'm kind of cool with that. Look, we've got so many five drops and good draws in here. Just let me draw them. Chandra's Revolution. Hey, they were, they were, um, airdrop aeronauts. They were revolting with you, Chandra. Why would you kill them? I mean, they got three turns to live with Padim in play, so unless they find something, I'm not sure they can kill me. Yeah, I think swing with Long Tusk Cub next turn is the correct play. Like, wiping their... Oh. Okay. A 4-3 flyer. That's a little scary. They can move the goggles onto it, but they don't. Hunt the weak. Perfect. Have you eat you. Pass the turn. Two more turns, my friend more turns. Well, three more turns, technically, since they draw two, draw two, draw it from an empty deck. They can't cast any more card draw, otherwise they lose a, tur lose a turn of combat. They swing with the super. We take it. Go down to 22. Yeah, we gain 10 life this game. Oh... Oh no, that's three Thopters right there with the Whirler Virtuoso. Isn't there like an infinite combo you can do with this? Where you have like three of those things that when they enter the battlefield create three energy. And then have Whirler Virtuoso. Our turn. Renegade Rallier. That can bring back Woodweaver Puzzle Knot. Gained a bunch of life. I like that. Let's see. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Power in the air. Take action. Give it flying. Sure thing. They just chump block the long tusk cub. That's fine. And at this point, all we have to do is survive, so let's just get Wood or Woodweaker's Puzzle Knot back instead of Eddie Trailhawk. Yeah, I think I like that. Gain three life. And they concede. GG's. On to the next game.
on the play. This hand's missing green, and the entire hand's uncastable. We'll mulligan. This is better. Finally, we see our two drops. I was wondering where they were. I was a little worried that we just didn't have them. Let's bottom the cog work puzzle knot. Land and go. Let's play a sage. We have nothing nothing for the energy to be used on just yet. But it's a 2-1. More damage output. Swing for two. If they have a removal spell, we can just renegade rally right back. Let's cast an Eddie Trailhawk. More aggressive rather than Druid of the Cow. If it's a Chandra's Pyro Helix, that'd be annoying. Okay, Pyro Helix. <laughs> they play a Pillar Bug. Um, Druid of the Cow. Pass the turn. That way, if we draw a White Source next turn. Things looking pretty good. Underhanded designs. That's a removal spell and a considerable amount of life loss. Let's just cast an Atrial Hawk. Something for to use our energy on. Another Pyro Helix? Dang. I just want to have one Eddie Trail Hawk live, please. Glad we added in the extra one over another uh, monstrous onslaught. Furious reprisal. Come on. Removal spell after removal spell from them. Just cast a 4 3 flyer. Pass the turn. No revolt, sadly. But, eh, you, can, you do what you can do. They play Gifted Aetherborn, sure thing, into a Frontline Rebel, attack each combat of Able. Engineered Might. Let's see. Let's swing for four. And just cast a sad Renegade Ralliers. They live fast. I just hope no die young. Just a reckless fire weaver. Only one artifact in play, still. So underhand designs ain't doing too much. I assume with those two. We'll block the gift we'll trade with the gifted Aetherborn. I th like the frontline rebel represents more damage, but the gifted Aetherborn represents more life. <laughs> and at the moment life is what we care about, since we keep smacking them for four in the air. And we can finish them with the uh, plus five. Yeah. So yeah, in two turns they're dead. Play a land for Rishkar's expertise purposes. I'm not sure if there are any discard spells besides Mine Rot. And if it's Mine Rot, then, well, keeping a land in hand wouldn't do anything anyway. Salivating Gremlins. Yeah, they're playing all the artifact uh, synergy, but none of the artifact cards. Block a uh, pillar bug. Take four. Glint sleeve arson. Perfect. Moved combat. Swing for five or four. And then cast a glint sleeve with a counter. That way we can properly block the pillar bug, the fire weaver. And the Salivating Gremlins, unless they get an artifact, which, if they get an artifact, that'd be really bad for us. Oh, that's the worst artifact they could have had by far. Salivating Gremlins get giant. Reckless Fireweaver is going to ping us for a bunch. And they gain a life. Block here, block here, take... Is this lethal? Yeah, GG's. I didn't want to deal with math, and we were pretty dead. Wait a second. Ah, dang it, we had the game in the bag. 
You block the frontline rebels. You pump with engineered might and kill them on the crack back. Ugh. That was a punt. How, how am I even in diamond and I didn't see that line? We're on to the next game. On the draw here, we'll mulligan. We could have just had the game meet last time. Bottom land. Play a planes, pass a turn. We got this. A 7-2 is fine. This was supposed to be a 7-1 already, but... Eh. Misplays, miscount. I thought we would live at 1, but I just miscounted. I should have double-checked my math. Play a Sage of Sahali's Claim. Aether Swooper. Crew Sky Skiff. Missing for two. Wow, that is a lot of land. You bought him one land and drew three more. I mean, on the plus side, the only way to go is up from here. Like spells. Just some spells. All we want. Okay, no revolutionary rebuffs, please. Thank you very much. Cast an Untethered Express. Actually, I'm not sure if uh, Revolutionary Rebuff could counter Untethered Express. So I think it says counter target non-artifact spell, unless it's controller pays two. The Ceremonial Rejection would be definitely annoying, though. Ah, red-blue artificers. Slash artifacts. Okay, no destructive tampering here, please. I like my Untethered Express a lot. It's gonna kill you. So, let it live? Question mark? It's worth the risk of running out now versus next turn. Just because we're not doing anything on this turn. And we have a bunch of 5 drops that we could draw. So, yeah. It's worth the risk of running into a... Just a spell that can kill it. Okay. Iron Tread Crusher. They can crew with Sky Skiff and then crew Crusher, but I think we're, we can trade. We can use Blossom Defense and beat it. A servo driving a Sky Skiff driving a Crusher. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Blossoming defense. Neat little combat trick. Trample over for one, even. Pass the turn. And this Untethered Express is gonna start untethering their face. Hopefully we draw something. Rishkar's expertise would probably be the best draw here. By far. Yeah, I'm honestly liking Rishkar's expertise a lot. They cast a Warlord Virtuoso. And create a Thopter. Let's see, they have... Okay, they're swinging, so not blocking. So we take four. And we'll start beating them to Bloody Pulp. Simple. Swing for six. Cast a Thriving Rhino. Play a Forest. Pass a turn. And we can start growing this. We'll just have a bunch of growing threats. Come on, Rishkar's Expertise. Come on, Rishkar's Expertise. Please, RN Jesus, give us Rishkar's Expertise off the top. It would mean the world to us. It will refuel our hand, let us cast a free spell, all of it for six mana, which we have enough mana for. They cast a Dukara Peafowl. They crew the skiff. Let's see, they have, if they swing with everything. Or just the flyers. Yeah, they only have 
four power, so they can't block the express, express, but they can block the Rhino. Okay, okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down, MTG Arena. And Orange Jesus. Maybe we're not supposed to win with a Rishkar's Expertise. Maybe he's supposed to win with a Flying Untethered Express, because that makes sense, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Just, you just give a... It's untethered, so it's not tethered to any rails. So it can go anywhere, even the skies. You know the skies, the saying the sky's the limit? Well, not with this express. It will go anywhere it pleases. No matter how unorthodox. Hmm. I'm thinking of like the card ready to rumble right now would be scary, but I just remembered it's not in the set. Just destructive tampering, even worse. Cause they'll have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. We'd go to one. If they have destructive tamp no, we can block with Adriel. They cast a swooper. This untethered express is gonna be an eight eight, and they'll have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven power flying, so they can't even block the express. But they'll have to chump block at least four power of it. Or five power, since it'll trample over for four then. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. They crew the sky skiff? What are they doing? Won't you just be like dead to this express? And you can't kill me when I have a flyer very easily. Unless they have a removal spell for Eddie Trailhawk, which makes sense then. If it's like Chandra's Pyro Helix, we still live. Um, if it's the three damage, deal three damage to target creature and two damage to their face spell, that would suck. But then we they only have one, two, four power in the air. Chandra's Power Helix, cool. Rish Car's expertise. Rish Car's expertise. Rish Car's expertise. Draw something good, like a what like next turn, Rish Car's expertise. Our turn? Cultivator's caravan. Well, let's crew here. Move to combat. Swing with everything. Pay some energy. Let's see, they have to chump block this at least. They can double block like that. We eat it both, and they take one. And now we're just dead in the air. GG's. We have a caravan, but not much else. Quicksmith genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We punted that sixth game. Oh well. Uh, we could have had the 7 1, but instead we have the 6 3. Yikes. Oh well. Well, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It means so much to me. And I'll be doing some more K Kaladesh Remastered while it's still up and online. So I hope you all have a great day. And I'll see you all next time.